Okay, so we're going to start in another all four position, which I think is how we started last week, which is kind of funny because I usually don't start in all fours. But we're going to shift the focus today to what is happening between the shoulder blades. So before we um, go any further, I want you just to push into your palms and kind of fill in the space between your shoulder blades and then drop down. But it's subtle. So if you watch me, I'm just kind of broadening the upper back and then dropping back down. So my torso is moving one or two inches, but I'm not doing like the whole cat-cow, right? It's, it's more subtle than that. And I'm really just trying to focus on the area of my upper back. And so here, when I push my hands down, I lift my collarbones up and I start to feel a little bit of like this tenting sensation in my armpit. And that's what I want you to kind of go for is this sensation that I always say tenting your armpit, but I basically mean like it feels like there's kind of like you're making um, like you're drawing, you're sucking your armpit up like like an armpit bonda. So we're just going to do that a couple of times here. And then from here, tone the low belly. So the low belly is really engaged. And there's like this little bit of a lengthening of the low back. So it's kind of like you were, um, you know, it's not like, it's not totally round still, but it's like you're dropping a tail. So the pelvis is kind of weighted, like you were just kind of dropping a tail. And when you do that, you should feel a little bit of engagement through your low belly. But your back is pretty flat at this point. And then from here, step your right foot back and step your left foot back and you're gonna find yourself in a plank. And we're gonna just start by holding plank for a few breaths to really, it's <laughs> really a great way to warm up is to hold plank. It doesn't really feel great, but, but it's pretty effective. So let's hold it for five breaths. Remember I'm Pilates, you inhale through the nose and you exhale through the mouth. That's one, two, three, four, and five and then lower the knees back down. And if at any point um, the planks are hurting your wrists, just go to a forearm plank. We're gonna do some deliberate forearm planks, but feel free to swap to forearm plank anytime that you want. Okay, now we're gonna do this, another subtle exercise, which is super effective. You're gonna turn your toes under so that the pads of the toes are on the mat. And you're gonna, again, there's that sensation of like a very slight tucking. Um, so it's like you you had a tail and it was kind of going straight down, not all the way tucked to your belly, but kind of straight down between your legs. And now that, that same sensation of um, pushing the collarbone straight up to the ceiling. So you fill in the space in the upper back. Now lift both knees off the floor, but they only come up about an inch. So it's subtle. And then up an inch and down an inch and up an inch and down an inch. And it's a real small movement up been down 10 9 so the upper body's not moving and it's kind of like the, the abs are pulling you up an inch and down an inch and let's do five more so if I were to kind of adjust you I would be right here and I put my fingers right underneath your belly button and I just push you up one inch and down three two and one and I like to do that one specifically because it's really relevant to jumping through, jumping back, and even bakasana, right? Because when you're in all those poses, this part basically kind of stays the same. And then it would be kind of like that moving through or moving up to the arms for bakasana. So it's a great way to isolate the upper body so that it's static and it's really um, strengthening. And then like, you know, have the lower body be doing the movement. Okay, so we're gonna, um, from here, step back to a plank again. And this time in plank, you're going to, let's see, I actually think I'm gonna face you so you can see a little bit better. You're gonna start by pulling your right thigh to your, your chest, so it just kind of is on the inside of the elbow, and then step it back. And then the left knee to the chest. Yep, and step it back, and fill in the space between your shoulder blades. And then the right knee, to the right elbow, so it goes outside of the arm and back. And the left knee to the left elbow, so it goes outside and back. And then we're gonna cross right to the left, 
left to the right elbow. Okay, push back to a down dog just so you can have a moment to regroup. And here we go again. Shift the weight forward. Find your solid plank line. Exhale, knee or chest to knee to the chest and back and switch and back. Okay, right knee, right elbow and back and back. Okay, last time, right knee, left elbow. So a little bit of a twist and back and twist and back to plank and press it back to a downward facing dog. And we're going to do it one more time so you can take a little breather here and down dog, pedal your legs if that helps you. Uh, definitely try to lengthen the back in a little bit of the opposite direction so it would be a little bit more arched in the down dog. And then last time, from plank, knee to chest and back and knee to chest and back, knee to elbow and back, knee to elbow and back and then knee to the opposite elbow. So you have a twist and feel it in the oblique. And then back and last time. And rest. Awesome, that was a good job. Okay. Um, let's have you, we'll spin it around. We'll do a little bit of core work. I mean, that is actually core work also, you probably felt it, but um, we'll do a little bit more isolated core work and then we'll do some other plank variations. I don't wanna, uh, tucker you out right away. So um, I love this exercise or the, this series of exercises for strengthening the core for a couple of reasons. And I think it's really relevant to yoga. Um, so just for the sake of demonstration, um, I'm going to kind of reach my arm so you can see a little bit better. And it's the sensation like you're getting punched in the gut. So if someone were to boom, punch you in the gut, you would kind of recoil your abs and let the low back round a little bit and then come back up. And we're going to do that a few times because that, my friends, is very much what happens in Bakasana, right? So like if you just look really quickly here, like this is almost like the Bakasana shape. So there's this movement that comes from the low belly to help with the doming of the back and that ability to tuck yourself into a little ball for something like Bakasana. But also Lance for like the jumping through and jumping back. It, like a lot of that action is um, engaging the torso or engaging the core so much that the torso kind of shrinks up and gets smaller so that you can be more compact for these arm balances and transitions. So again, let's just do that a couple more times. That tucking. And this time I want you to roll back a little bit onto the mat. So the waistline taps onto the mat. And then come right back up. And if you need to cheat to come up, you can. Actually, let's all cheat a few times. So just catch the back sides of your legs. You're not cheating a lot, but it's, you, you can use the arms a little bit. Lower down, tap the waistline onto the mat, and exhale up. Inhale, lower down, tap the waistline to the mat, and exhale up. Let's do five more. Five. And then if you want to do just one arm, four. You can. And then, of course, you would switch arms. Three. Maybe no arms, two, and one. And then go ahead and lie all the way down onto the mat. And then from here, we'll do a little core blast. Um, so we'll do a grouping of classical Pilates exercises. And we're going to start with single leg stretch. So you're gonna pull your legs um, into basically the tabletop position um, so that, and then you're going to extend the left leg out, right hand to the right ankle, left hand to the right knee, and you give it a little pull. And you're, you're looking forward, like you're looking in between your legs, and the shoulder blades are off the mat, and then you switch. So the legs move, switch, exhale, switch. So you inhale, and then exhale, pull, inhale, exhale, pull. The legs move but the upper body basically stays in the same position. So it's not lowering and lifting. It's just staying kind of static and the legs are moving. Let's do five, four, three, two, and one. And then from here, hug both knees into the chest, reach both legs, um, both the arms and legs long, 
and then pull in and tuck the chin um, into your, your chest a little bit. So you're kind of looking right in between your pelvis. So you're in this little ball, legs reach, arms reach, and exhale, hug it in. Inhale, legs reach, arms reach, and exhale, hug it in. And let's do five. So you can adjust. You could um, reach the legs up more if that's too much for the low back. And if it starts to hurt your neck, you just put your hands behind your head and you can give your neck some support. I mean, we don't want your neck to hurt. Let's just do one more here. And then go ahead and rest for a second. So the neck hurting is pretty common when you're new to Pilates. So why don't I just talk about that really quickly? One, if the neck hurts a lot, you can always do more um, plank version, like plank variations. So plank is a great way to strengthen the core. And of course, the neck's not crunching. But otherwise, if the neck's hurting, really think about um, not looking so much by reaching your head, but lifting the head and the shoulders up and kind of keeping the chin tucked so that the work is more in the upper abs than it is with like just reaching your head up. So if, if you're getting a lot of strain in your neck, usually people are just kind of reaching their head up. So try to kind of take the whole unit of shoulders in the neck. And then of course you can always interlace your fingers and put your hands behind your head to help a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna move into the next two exercises that go in this series, which are single leg versions of what we just did. So you would take your right leg up and you could catch the ankle, the calf or the hamstring. It does not matter. I'm going to go for my calf. Head and shoulders come up off the mat. Again, kind of tuck the chin to keep the neck safe. And then you, you pull the right thigh into your chest and you switch. But here's the key, you guys. You want to work on pulsing the right leg. So it would be pulse, pulse and switch. And then you pull the left leg and it's a pulse, pulse. And what makes it extra tricky is that while you're pulsing the right leg, or the top leg, you're trying to keep the bottom leg perfectly still. And it's gonna wanna pulse too, it always wants to, but you're gonna try not to let it also pulse. So let's do two more on each leg. Think about keeping the bottom leg still. And then interlace the hands behind the head, both legs are up. And um, you actually, I'm going to give you a couple options here. If this one hurts your low back, I want you to sit on your hands. So if the low back hurts, you're just going to put your hands right underneath your waistline. If the low back doesn't hurt, you can keep the hands behind the head and the elbows wide. And you're going to lower about halfway down. Pause and exhale up. And lower about halfway down. Pause and exhale up. And let's do four more. Four. Three, two, and one. And then our very last one here, you're gonna keep your hands behind your head, you bend your knees, you take your left armpit to the right knee, reach the left leg away from you, and then switch. So right armpit to the left knee and reach the right leg, and switch, and switch. So this is great for the obliques, and it's really important to reach from the armpit, not the elbow, because often people reach from the elbow and then you limit how much you can actually twist. So reach from the armpit and look down at your waistline and you can kind of see your shirt crinkling and, and that's a good sign. So we'll just do a couple more here. And how about one more on each side? And then go ahead and hug your knees into your chest. So that is a great warm up series. Hopefully you're feeling your core. I am definitely feeling mine. Okay, so while we're here, 